Citizenship. As Choctaws, our Constitution gives us rights and privileges and a responsibility to uphold them. One of those duties is historical preservation. I sat down with research assistant Megan Baker to talk about some of the documents that have helped to define our tribe. I always want to make these documents be alive today. So do you mind just taking us on this historical journey about how we as Choctaws, how did we even keep up with each other, you know, prior to the Dolls Rolls and things like that? You know, Choctaw Nation, we think of it as a kind of singular bounded entity. But, you know, back then it was kind of um, more like based on the villages and the kind of confederacy that we have. So you had the three chiefs kind of back then. And so they were in charge of a certain amount of villages. And that was based on what the chief could kind of like provide. All of that kind of like gave political legitimacy to those kinds of chiefs. And that's kind of how they're organized together. But it was very kind of fluid in who can kind of come and belong. Um, you know, the Choctaw traditional system is like the Ixa system. And you're supposed to marry the opposite kind of Ixa because you want to make sure you're meeting other people and it's not you're just hanging out with the same people all the time. So you were always bringing people kind of in. Um, and so that's a really traditional kind of thing. Do you mind explaining to everybody about the reason why the how the DOS came about and what it did? 1887, you have the General Allotment Act, which kind of applies to everybody, um, but it doesn't apply to the five tribes because their treaties are so good that they're kind of legally protected by it. So then Congress is like, but we really want their land. So we're going to send the Dawes Commission in. And so the Dawes Commission is going to negotiate with the five tribes about whether they will accept allotment or whether or not. You can own your own <laughs> land. You can have your own piece of property, your own 160 acres. I mean, I could just hear it back in the time. You can gain your independence. You'll be much more civilized Indians. And so you have a lot of that kind of like um, civilizing discourse going around being like, oh, Indians aren't smart enough. And if you have allotments, then you will be like everyone else, like a U.S. kind of citizen. There's a lot more kind of white people coming into Indian territory because at the same time, like that's when we have our mining industry. And so Choctaws actually didn't work in the mines that we had. We brought in a lot of outside laborers. And so um, that was kind of adding to the tension, the kinds of jurisdictional issues that we have. Like we couldn't prosecute white people on our in our territories. So you have all these kinds of different forces on the Choctaw government and, you know, people aren't getting along and kind of everyone's disagreeing. And so those Choctaw leaders were like, it's kind of like we're reading the room. They're kind of seeing what's going on. And they're like, I think it's going to have to be allotment because that's the only way that we can determine the terms of allotment. And this is the way that we want to do it. And they kind of negotiate it and it gets kind of ratified by all of the Choctaws. They all vote on it. Um, and so then in 1898, Congress passes the um, Curtis Act, which we have a copy of. And so that 1897 Atoka Agreement is basically kind of enshrined in this kind of law. And so they're like, this is the way it's kind of, this is how allotment's going to play out. The Dolls Road due to allotment, they wanted to start keeping a, a census of who should get this land. So what was the good and bad about the Dolls Road, do you think? So before you can give out allotments, you have to make the Dawes Rolls. And these are what we know as the Dawes Rolls. They're based off censuses. And originally, the Dawes Commission kind of came in and they are like, oh, Choctaw Nation, oh, they made it, so they're not good enough. But they kept meticulous kind of detail. And the Dawes Rolls also enrolled a lot of people who weren't on that kind of census because they were done every 10 years. And so people had died or people had changed their names and kind of, it really kind of updated that in a way. Uh, my assumption is there was people, like you said, that were non-tribal members that was probably trying to say, hey, I'm Choctaw, I want some of that land too. Oh, it, it definitely happened. There was definitely a lot of people lying to get on the Dawes rolls. And so Choctaw Nation really fought against adding those kinds of people because they weren't kind of entitled because they weren't part of the community. We're always fighting for our sovereignty and for our dignity and for yeah. who we were as Choctaw people. Yeah. You know, we've always talked about we're better as a whole mm -hmm. when we have our land, not my individual land and your individual land. That's what we could give per capita. And then what do we have left as a tribe? That's the reason why I've always opposed per capita, because we always have to remain as Choctaw people 
who we are without it. How do we keep our culture? How do we keep our history? How do we keep our language alive if we don't keep all of those resources together? We then truly become assimilated. Yeah, the this culture of like individual kinds of only you and your family that that was brought into Choctaw culture through allotment, right? It's to really kind of make people believe that you should live an individual kind of life and care less about a kind of collective, which was what Choctaw people did for so long. And it's so kind of like culturally destructive because it brought in this like white settler kind of culture of you um, own a single plot of land and you kind of just do your own thing and you have your small nuclear family. But it's like, no, we were much more expansive and cared about the extended kind of family and building constant kinds of relationships. And that's the reason why I think the, the uh, McGirt ruling has been so critical to re reaffirmation. My goal is for us to educate, to learn more constantly, because it's hard again, like I said, going back to 1896 at the time, you know, if they ask you, do you want to be on the Dawes Road? I still say people thought they were probably doing the right thing when they said, hey, we want allotment. Yeah. But then in the reality, how many people has? I know last time I looked, it's less than 5% of our Choctaw people have their allotment allotted land. Again, all of our history, what we're trying to do is to educate people and for them to understand and have all of the knowledge so that they can make proper good decisions to sustain our tribe for the future. As the current generation of the Choctaw tribe, we have an important responsibility to understand where our citizenship comes from. In order to tell our story, we must preserve these historical documents and letters for our ancestors and our future generations. Until next time, Chapisa la Chiquita.